you know when you 3D print you don't have enough filament on the roll and they just keep stacking up like this and you're like, I can't throw this out, I want to be a, a litter bug. Well, this might be a solution. It's a filament connector from Sunlu. I'm going to unbox it and give it a whirl. Let's jump right in. So the Sunlu filament connector is 38 US dollars and 62 Australian dollars. And here we have the box and there isn't really anything special about it, so let's just open it. I can't help but open a box neatly with a blade as I always find myself reusing the product and putting the thing back inside the box when I'm not using it. Not much wasted space in this box, which is great for reducing shipping costs and having a smaller packaging footprint. You can fit more in a smaller space, which is always good for shipping. Instructions are on the top, which I'll pass on any relevant information that I find in there. Okay, let's see what else is interesting in here. Oh, it's USB powered. I might try and see if I can run this off a power bank as the cord isn't very long. Let's slip the filament connector out of its cozy blanket and get a closer look. Jeez, I love peeling off protective coatings. Before we have a closer look at the filament connector, let's see what's left in this box. Okay, we've got the PTFE sleeves. It says there's 200 in here. Let's get a closer look at these. Slippery little suckers. Let's see if I can get these sausage fingers to grab one. Yep, yeah, it's, a, it's a tube. Okay, back to the filament connector itself. It's a very solid piece of kit. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. Under this cover, it's made of a high quality heat insulating plastic composite, which won't heat up or melt, obviously because it's got heating elements in it. Here's an even closer look. We have the upper cover, we have the cutting slot, more on that later, the heating cover, and the heating cover release button. When you pop the internal hood, you'll see the heating slot. On the back, it lets you know the electrical output, which is five volts and two amps. So the power bank should have no issue running it. If you pause the video, you can see any other relevant information you want here. So feel free to pause. The power bank I'm running is a Comsol 25,600 milliamp hour battery, which has a hundred watt output. This is a good sized power bank. It's an older one, so you can't really grab it too many places anymore, but I'll put an equivalent link in the description below of a battery pack about the same size if you're interested. Now it's love, it's got everything it does. The screen is really easy to see, although at the angle I'm capturing at, doesn't really show that, but in future shots you'll see that it's lit quite well in all lights. Most important button, the power on and off. Then we have the settings button, which just toggles between the plastic type and the temperature of the heating element for those plastic types. Next up, you have the toggle up. You know what comes after up, down. So these arrows just toggle between the plastic settings or adjust the temperatures. As I've been explaining this, you can see that the heating element is heating up and getting ready to start fusing. We're going to test with a few different brands and colors of PLA. Remember when you're fusing, you need to have the same plastic type. You can't fuse PLA to PETG. It's really like socks and sandals. They really don't go together. But I'll excuse Crocs and socks, but only if you're in sports mode, of course. Remember you need to cut your filaments on an angle like shown here. When you slide them in the PTFE tube, they need to mate properly without any gap. Otherwise, you won't get a good bond. So make sure they align well. I was having a bit of trouble to begin with, I was using small pieces and they kept getting curled up, but I got the hang of it. And now when I'm using longer pieces, there won't be as much issue because they'll be on a spool. I've seen some 3D jigs out there that would help hold the filament in place. If you've seen one, just put the link in the comments below and other people might find that useful to check out as I haven't had a really good look yet. Once it's heated up, which only takes about three minutes, put the film in the heating slot and shut the cover and it only takes seven, eight seconds with the PLA. I'll throw the other temperatures and times up on the screen for other filaments so you can pause here and have a look at those. There is a beep to warn you when it's done. As you can see when I pull it out it's still soft so you'll need to hold it for a second before it hardens. If you have a small section of the filament you can just slip the tube off and reuse it and save it. But now I'll show you how to cut that PTFE tube off. It does look a bit awkward whilst I'm doing it as I've got the camera between me and the cutter, but I found it much easier when I stopped filming. Now I have a fair few colors fused. Let's fire up the 3D printer. I wrap the small amount of filament back on a spool. If you're doing heaps, which I plan to do, I'm gonna to need to get a spool winder. Well, I'm not sure if that's exactly what it's called. I've The name's blank on me, but if you have any good downloads or links to ones that are already assembled, just chuck that in the comments for me to read and I'll be keen to check them out. Once the filament's fed in, I check one of the exposed joints and it looked great before we started printing. And the best test to print obviously is the Benchy and here's a time lapse of whilst we're printing it. For reference, this is four colors of PLA and three different brands, which is Sunlu, Prusa and Polymaker. If you want to pick up one of these filament connectors, it'll be in the description below and I'll put an, a link to getting extra PTFE sleeves down there too. Now let's check out the result. Looks amazing, no issues in the transitions between the filaments. I can see why I need to purge filament. When you do multicolor prints, you can see the Galaxy Red bleeding into the vanilla.
Let's go to my closing thoughts. Look, it went really well. I'm pretty impressed with it. I still don't know if the cost is worth it, but we'll see. If I keep using it, it will be. One thing I noticed that was a little bit finicky was the cutting at the top. Um, I might get better at it and peeling off the PTFE tubes after the fact, but I feel like that's probably just not using it enough. But the actual sealing went great. As you can see, the Benchy turned out really well. That's four filaments from three different brands, or PLA of course. And just, yeah, really happy with it. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We're gonna have way more videos coming. Got a few cool reviews coming up and some other projects. So don't forget to subscribe and also check out these videos if you haven't already. See you in the next one.